Hi, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and today I'm going to show you how to paint an aspen tree slash birch tree. They both are very similar in characteristics. Uh, here in the mountains of Northern California, we have aspens, so that's what I'm going to be sharing. And this is the same type of board that I shared on my blog post on my uh, vegetable painting signs. Um, it's, I'll have a link down in the description below. So to get started, this would normally be stained. This I had to paint over because I started to paint something else and I didn't like it. And rather than sand that down, I just went over it with a burnt umber paint. Um, this is a scrap one, so it probably will get used several times um, in different tutorials. But here I had measured across two and a half inches from top, at top and bottom, put a mark with a piece of chalk, and then I ran my tape along there and I should have I should have taped it on the other side my mistake one moment okay so I had you can see the chalk marks and I ran that painters tape I sealed it down pretty good now when I go over it with my paint um, there could be some seepage under there underneath where the slats are but it's not a big deal now I want mine to be let's say three and a half inches wide. So I measure from the edge of the tape and I think that's a good width. So top and bottom I measure and I make a chalk mark. Now this doesn't have to be perfect perfect as far as um, the, the measurements just as long as I get it close. I'm not real particular. If it's a little bit off it's not gonna be a big deal to me some people are more precise but I'm not never have been so okay now to get started this is like I said sealed down and I'm gonna start instead of with the white I am gonna start with a gray now you could do this with a butter pecan or some other mid well, it's not really a mid-tone, but it's a light tone. Let me see. I'll put the butter recon on here, too. This is really just an undercoat for... That one might be a little bit better. The white might be a little better coverage on that one. Because white against the dark would have um, been harder to get opaque. I would have had to have several coats. And I'm missing my three-quarter inch brush. I had it here just a second ago. One moment. Right back. I have it. I'm wetting in my little... My bin, here's my little brush bin, which I absolutely love. It makes it easier to clean your brushes. I'm wetting my brush. I'm wiping it on my towel here. This is just an old rag towel I have. And then I'm just going to blend these. These colors could be any mid-tone colors. It's really just the base coat for the bark. I'm really going to load my brush. And I'm going to, and you notice I'm not going to come up against it that way. I'm going to just stay up and down against the tape. That way I'm not pushing paint under the tape. Now up there at the top I didn't get that sealed really super duper well so I'm not going to push the paint too much up there. Now it's going to be getting into the slats a little bit but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. I'm just going to fill in as thickly as I can and butt up against that. Now you want to be careful not to get on the underneath of the frame it, that has the brown paint under there right now. And if you wanted to, which would be a really good idea, and I, it hasn't been done on this one, but would be to seal it with the, I use the Rust-Oleum spar urethane, um, the water-based, and when I do my final sealing, but also it would help, like if I got paint up underneath there, I could just wipe that off very easily if it was already sealed with that. So that's just a handy tip. So here, this I'm not going to overwork it, because if I do, I'm going to drag all the paint off, but I just wanted to get it as even as I could. So there I have the first coat down. Of It's a gray butter pecan mix, but you can use either or or whatever mid-tone value um, paint you wanted to if you had an extra something. And I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back 
and see if I get good coverage with white. Okay, I went ahead and did another coat with the gray because um, I just felt it needed it. So it's now dry. I quick dried it with my blow dryer. And now I'm going to add some white. This is Wicker White by Folk Art, Plaid Folk Art. I get the big bottle because I use a lot of white. And I'm just going to go over it. And you can see I'm not going to worry about being super... Um, opaque with it because I don't mind if some of the little bit darker background comes through it gives the it the bark texture and if you ever look at um, birch or aspen bark it has those different tones in it so I'm just going to get this laid on here as fast as I can and I'll have to put some more white on my palette here get this on here as best I can and this is a number this is a three quarter inch flat one stroke Donna Dewberry brush. It comes in the multi pack that I link to on my website all the time. It, um, it is a powerhouse brush that I use all the time and cleaned properly. And I have a post on how I clean my paint brushes. Um, it lasts, I've had this set for over a year and it still has a great chisel edge and I use it all the time. Okay, I'm getting it in there, paint it on, and then I'm going to streak this up here. When you start like right here, it, it makes a, a mark in it, and unless you want that mark there, you need to kind of start way down the bottom and make long strokes. And since this is on the edge of this board here, it doesn't matter. I can start there and do the long strokes. But. So that's pretty much a good coverage of the white. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfectly filled in because it you want some of the other colors to be kind of shining through to give it some texture. And there you have your white. Now you can come in before it dries completely. And let me see if I can do a mix of white and black to get the gray. I'm going to put um, a bit of the gray along the edge where you kind of streak it in. If you've seen birch bark or aspen bark, you will notice that it has. Let me see if I can mix it if I want. And it, I mean, I put just the teeny tiniest bit of black and that is just way too dark. So it needs more white. I want it to be a very light gray and I'm getting there so and you can kind of play with the mix now I just kind of streak it in from the side in different areas or up along it and you want different widths shorter longer shorter longer and it's kind of getting dry in the brush that's good and I'm just streaking I'm starting on top of the tape and then dragging it on now this side I'm just going to leave without the gray. And you can see where I had a little bit of that darker black in it from mixing and that kind of got in it and it gave it texture. You see that streak of the extra dark? So it gives it different colorations, shadings. Okay, now I'm going to leave that to dry. And I may want to darken that along just along that edge but I'll wait until it's dry to do that. And so now I can come in and I'll figure out where I want a branch to come. If I want a branch to stick out up here. On my last one I had it <clears throat> just below this. and I, So I will make a little mark with, I could do it with the corner of this brush, but I want to get have it be a little more precise. So I'm gonna get a small liner brush. Um, this is a shorter one. I have longer liner brushes. And I'm going to kind of take it, some of that gray. If I want it a little darker, I get a little more black in it. And I'm just going to make a kind of little... Oh, I have too much water in my brush, but a little loop that way. And that's kind of be where kind of the 
branch is going to come from and then there'll be one a little further down that is going to maybe point downwards and it's going to be closer to the edge now if, if for any reason you mess up these things um, and you think oh that's wrong you can just go over it with white and restart it redo it again I'm going to dry out my brush even more it still had too much water in it okay just wiped it on the towel and then let's see right kind of in the middle here I have just a small branch coming and so that's where those branches are going to come from. And I can't do the branches until I pull the tape up. And I guess I'm, I'm good for what I want to use the tape for. So I'm just going to pull it. The paint's still wet. Sorry, my microphone got caught there. I was trying to reach around and throw my tape away in the garbage. Okay, and here. And one thing good about pulling your tape up while your paint is still wet is um, sometimes if the paint has dried part of it will stick with to the tape and then you can actually peel your paint up along with your tape and that just isn't pretty so here is my trunk of my aspen tree or birch whichever you want to call it and now I need to dry it quick dry it so that I can put in the streaks of black and or darken some of the gray if I need so I will go and dry it and I'll be right back. Now we're going to do the little black streaks on it and I'm getting some black. I don't know, I could tone it down just a little bit so it's not quite so dark. And I'm just going to eyeball it. You know, they have the little streaks. They're not perfectly even or, and I kind of give them a little bit of a curve because you know, the trunk is curving and just here and there, do a, a little streak. Oh, underneath this one, I want a little streak. Down a little bit more, a little short one, a long one. Kind of space them out. I'm kind of looking at the one I did before on my computer screen so I can say, well, eh, those are too much the same size. I need one a bit bigger. You can make them a little bit fatter if you want. Give it a little more pressure. And you can do some lighter. Go in there and lighten it up. Add more white to your brush. Add a lot more white to your brush. Black is so strong. And then you just can kind of tap in a few of the lighter gray. Or it's not really a lighter gray. A dark gray, but it's lighter than the black. And there you have your little streakies. And if you want to come in and like right along the center, add some white, stark white, and that will bring some brightness forward. So it gives it more of the illusion of being rounded. Because this side's, you can even streak a little bit of gray along this side. Whoops, my bottle, I got it on the rim so it's, Gonna create a problem on there, but okay. I'm loading up with some more white on my brush, and I'm gonna make sure that's really white right through here. And if I want to make it a very a light, 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 light gray, very light. So right along here, just be careful, pulling along. You shouldn't see a lot of color and just kind of pull it in. Doesn't have to be solid up and down, just very, very light. And there's a tiny bit of butter pecan on my palette and that is getting into it, which is fine. Gives it a little bit of a different tone there. I got a little bit over. That's okay if I, I could wipe that up with a towel right now while it's still damp or I can go back over it with some burnt umber. But so there you have the little streaks in the bark. I'm going to do the branches and I guess I'll go ahead and do them in the white. It could be a little bit of gray. So I guess I'll put over there where it's kind of the blend or the mix. And I am 
still using my three quarter inch brush. If you feel better with a, a round brush or whatever, go ahead and use it. And I'm going to come right from here. I'm kind of, I don't want a straight out branch. Oops, I got caught in that ridge. I'm going to go up. And then I'm going to have some come right off. Come down. You don't want them to be stick straight either. And have one come down and out a little bit. And then a little branching off. And then a small one right close to the edge. So there's my branches. I'll have a little one. This one I will have go straight out. And then a the little one, tiny bit going down, tiny bit going up. And you want them kind of wiggly so that they look more naturalistic, I guess. And this one will go downwards too. So, And this is where a smaller brush would be easier to get into here because I'm going to be trying to get close to that edge. Now to, you can highlight and shadow this. You don't have to wait till it's dry. Get a bit more black on your brush or even some of that butter pecan, the black to make more of a gray. To go along underneath. I'm gonna shadow along underneath the branch. Try not to make it much wider. I want them to be very narrow. And like I said, if you feel more comfortable, go ahead and do this with a liner or a round brush, which you can keep it, have a little bit more control if that's what you desire. And you go along. I'm just, I'm not even being very precise. You don't even have to make a streak. You can tap along the bottom and get those shadows. And it would also give it a little more texture, which is great too. And I'll show you to get the highlighting along the top. I will use this little round brush or liner and get it real skinny on there and then just go along the top of the branch and I got too much water in it again. I always forget to wipe off the handle. Sometimes there's water on the handle and it drips down into the thing, onto the painting. So I'll just wipe that up, believe it or not, with my finger. Should have had a paper towel, but I didn't. You can come back with the gray. You can see my hand's even wiggly. I don't have a very strong hand. I didn't even have a lot of caffeine today. Don't know what's up with that. But you don't have to be precise. This is kind of like snow on top, if not just the highlight. So having it be wiggly is good. So, and you get the picture. Um, I would do the same on the other branches. And there you have the branches. Okay, so let me see. Along here, I wasn't real pleased with exactly how that went. So I'm going to kind of go over it with some lighter gray. And then on top, I'll do a little bit of white. And then a little bit darker underneath. Same over here. Carefully stay in the lines. White in there. And that branch didn't come all the way in there. We'll bring it in. Bring it in to meet up with that. More white on top, shadow underneath and behind. I don't like it too far in, so I'm just going to add more white there. And 
you can mess with it until you like it. Like I'm messing with this one until I get the look I'm going for. And you can look at other paintings or pictures and whatever and get an idea. Oops, so you got my hand in the paint and then put it on the bottom. One moment, let me grab a paper towel. So, got my paper towel. I'll rub that out. Looks like I got. So, I will let that dry and then I would come back in with my chickadee pattern and I would draw the outline and then paint it in just like I showed you on my chickadee painting tutorial. And here is where I had the cardinal. And I just had him peeking out, so I would just um, sketch out his head as he was looking around and you can look at my cardinal painting tutorial to see how you paint one of those so you just add them to it and there you have your chickadee cardinal in an aspen tree painting now like i said you could do this on pallet wood you could also do it on a canvas now uh, i have a beach painting quick beach painting tutorial and that's what I would do on here. This is an old canvas I've just regessoed because I was going to use it for something else. But I would do the sky like I did in my beach painting tutorial. Then I would add the aspen and the birds and then I would have it on. Oh, this is just one of those inexpensive canvases you get from Michaels. And there you would have a chickadee in an aspen slash birch tree painting on canvas. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.